Foster case, um, agenda item number four, CU 2014-7. Scott, if you would please present the six. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Jason is doing the technology switch route here. Um, this is a conditional use request that was tabled by the City Council at the meeting last month. You had recommended tabling uh, at staff's request to allow for re-advertisement and also the possible update by the applicant of their proposed site plan. Um, the case has been re-advertised, however, we have not received an updated site plan. Uh, we've discussed this at length at your work session over a month ago, your work session last week. Um, this is a fairly complicated piece of property. There's a lot of details that flow in and out of it and through the review, um, but it is a request for conditional use permit for two different uses, but under one application. Um, property split zone CC and CH. It's located at 1409 North Ashley Street. Um, this is the former Coca-Cola property for many of us that might remember. Coca-Cola had a distribution facility there for many, many years. The applicant purchased this property um, this past year and is proposing to redevelop it for commercial purposes. It has a series of buildings that you can see on the aerial on the screen and also in your packet. Um, the applicant is proposing an event center and the building in the lower right corner, which is the southeast corner of the property, building of a little more than 11,000 square feet, um, and then is also proposing a flea market in the center of the large building that faces Ashley Street. Um, the rest of the property would be redeveloped according to the zoning, and in this case, the front of the property is CH or Hobbit Commercial, and it would be whatever that zoning allows with all the accompanying development standards and so forth for redevelopment. Um, in your packet, it lists an overarching issue that is paramount for anything that goes on in this property. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, but as you see on the aerial, the uh, southern and eastern borders is One Mile Branch, which is one of the major drainage ways of the city. It is a state water, and a little more than half of this property is consumed by the flood way of One Mile Branch. That is an area that is more restrictive than the flood plain, which sometimes we run into with these types of zoning cases. Floodway um, does not allow hardly anything to take place in terms of redevelopment uh, or just new development. Um, it cannot be done there. Existing buildings, of course, are grandfathered in, but uh, major rehabilitation work or renovations is not allowed, and that is unfortunate for the applicant and necessary thing to convert these former sort of industrial buildings to commercial use. Um, staff that believes that with some good engineering and some perseverance, um, some of these issues can be mitigated, but that would take a good bit of work. Um, but regardless of the use that ends up on this property, the floodway issue must be addressed. Um, in the meantime, the applicant has submitted his request for conditional permit review. Um, that's what is being considered in your packet. The floodway issue is there, is given there for you as extra information but it does have a major bearing on this property. Um, in your places this evening, I gave out some three pages of additional items. The first one is actually a request from the applicant's representative um, by telephone and then by email this afternoon. They are requesting tabling of this item for two more months. Um, no reason has been given, although I asked specifically if there was one. Um, they did not offer to me a reason. Um, but we have no revised site <coughs> plan. My assumption or guess would be that perhaps it is time to revise the site plan. However, staff's opinion on that is the revised site plan really makes no difference uh, because the property is already developed out. There's the overarching issue of a floodway um, and the conditional use um, criteria and our responses to that would remain unchanged. We would still review and consider those conditional uses the same way um, unless a complete you know, demolition and reconstruction of the property were to take place, but even then, I think it's a maybe. Therefore, even though the applicant has recommended tabling, in regards to that, staff is recommending that we proceed and hear the case and submit a recommendation other than tabling to the City Council. Also in your handout are two more pages. One is a memorandum from the City of Valdosta Police Chief. He was going to be here this evening, but I don't see him yet. Um, he is very, very concerned about the conditional use request for an event center, um, and as is planning and zoning staff. Also is a letter that we received this afternoon from Brad Bergstrom, 
um, who has some environmental issues, particularly with trees, um, that really pertain to development in general in the floodway and flood plain portion of this site. Um, on your screen is the zoning map that shows the split pattern. The character area is also split between the more intensive commercial corridor of Ashley and the less intensive corridor of facing Lee Street. Um, it should be noted that these conditional uses that are being requested are only eligible in the CH zoning portion of the property, which is where these buildings are. Um, those are not uses eligible in the CC zoning. So as long as the buildings and associated parking can spill over to CC, but the actual use must be in CH. Um, in terms of the event center, um, the memorandum from the police chief is pretty self-explanatory, but it's essentially a building that is very isolated, um, very poor visibility, very poor access, and putting 500 plus people there in the late hours if there's an emergency situation, there are serious concerns about getting in and out or near that building, um, poor lighting, poor visibility, or paramount there. Um, the flea market itself is proposed to occupy about one-third of that larger building. Uh, in your packet, there is a site plan that looks like that. And there you see sort of the dotted dash line that traverses the site. That's the difference between floodway and not floodway. Um, but if, if you look at the building to the front, which I believe is building B, that center portion is where the proposed flea market is to be. Staff is supportive of a conditional use approval for a flea market with certain conditions that are on page two of your packet, and there are four of those. The first condition is conditional use approval shall be granted for a, a used merchandise flea market to be located within building B only, as depicted on the submitted site plan. The use shall be limited to no more than 11,950 square feet of Building B, and there shall be no expansions to this space, no use of outdoor tents or other temporary structures, and no use of temporary outdoor signage on the property. There shall be no outside storage or display of any merchandise or other items whatsoever on the property. Number two, use and occupancy of the building shall be in compliance with all applicable development codes and regulations including those related to floodplains and floodways. Number three, at all times that any business on the property is open during evening or nighttime hours, the parking area shall be properly lit in accordance with the LDR requirements. And number four, conditional use approval shall expire after five years if the flea market is not properly licensed and operating by that date. Um, many times you may recall with conditional uses, we use an expiration date of two or three years that were given the um, rather tough environmental issues to be overcome with the site, staff up that to five years to be a little more generous with the time. So that's the recommendation on the flea market. We are recommending denial of the conditional use for the event center. Um, as you see on the front page, there is a history of the applicant recently doing some work without permits or plan review, stop work order being issued back over the summer, stop work order is still in effect. Um, and all of that is essentially frozen um, until these things can be worked out. Um, again, lots of discussion. You just heard a lot more. I'll try and answer any questions further that you might have. All right, thank you. Are there any questions for the staff? This is where it's been tabled. Yes, sir, it's been tabled once. For that purpose. For re-advertisement and to allow the applicant to submit a revised site plan. If that portion of the building gets used as a flea market or other commercial purposes, then there's more than enough parking there to accommodate that. However, there is not enough parking to accommodate all buildings being used commercially, and particularly an event center with 500 plus patrons. But the flea market by itself, the site is ready, other than renovation issues and things that would be needed to get a business going. One question, is there anything we can put in the conditions to maintain the facade of the building? The property is in the Urban Commercial Quarter Overlay District. 
Um, the existing building that's there does comply with the architectural standards for the overlay district. Any changes to that is going to have to be reviewed for compliance. Okay. Um, and that includes site layout and some other things. Uh, most of the renovations that the applicant has already started are on those two buildings to the rear, buildings um, A and C. Um, they have new facades on them. Um, those have not been done to code. Those have not been done with any permits or plan review. And in fact, the comments on those additions is that they need to be taken off and plan reviewed, approved, permitted, and then started again. We just hate to see that iconic buildings change and that it's not a historic area or anything else, I realize, but it's still been been there for a long time and I hate to see it get chopped up and cut up on the facade. All right. Any other questions for the staff? Well, Matt, one question. I, I've either you've said or I've read that there is limited access to the place where they want the flea market. Well, the, the whole site has limited access I mean, but, but to the actual building. But to building B in the front, there is access from different directions um, in terms of walking in and outdoors. Um, the flea market area has access to the north, straight to the parking lot, okay. and also through the eastern part of the building, uh, which is basically warehouse type space, to a loading dock, into that paved area between these buildings um, A and B. Um, I've walked all through the building, um, you know, in terms of flea market and numbers of people, they don't usually generate as money as an event center would, um, but for a retail use, it's, it's plenty. Okay. Any other questions for staff? If not, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this application? There being none, is there anyone in the audience would like to speak against this application? There being none, I will not vote for public participation. Mr. Oh, Chairman, I think we have one. Yes. Uh, I've been trying to get in the north, actually. My concern is, is the parking. Let's be honest, I've got a car lot right next door, and there's not enough parking here to have 500 people for the event center. And my concern is, like parking and not parking lot. So, that's, that's the big problem I have. So, I don't know if there's any, any questions you have. Are there any questions for the speaker? Just for clarity, too, I've spoken with the gentleman. Um, his property is directly across the street on the other side of Ashley Street. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak against this application? Uh, my name is Trip Singletary, 3121 North Oak Street Extension. And we have the property just to the north of that. And, uh, you know, my concern is with the event center, it seems like we've had plenty of problems on the north end of the town with it. Uh, and it seems like the staff is against that too. But the flea market as well, you know, that building. I don't know in the past before that retention pond was put to the south of it. Uh, the guys that ran the coke oil plant said that, that water would come into that warehouse and they, they would have to stack pallets of coke like on the five or six pallets up to keep it out of the water. Uh, I don't know if there's any, any undermining of that building or, you know, they always said the roof is in bad shape as far as leaking. Uh, seems like that building's in pretty bad repair. Um, so I'd be you know, and, and then the police chief also has concerns about complying with ordinance, laws, application, and other businesses in the city. So, as far as that flea market being contained in that building and not tents and stuff set up, you know, my, my thinking is we've got to see, I think, I think the Walmart's coming, coming to that area. We can bring a lot of traffic, uh, maybe enhance that area, and maybe some other stuff to revitalize. But with a project like this going there now, I mean, I think. We'd all probably agree from north side to the courthouse. That area is kind of old and tired, and maybe Walmart coming may revitalize it with a project like this across the street. Uh, so I think it kind of puts a damper on the whole area. So I'm just you know, kind of concerned at what what that area brings. And what you know, I don't like to talk bad about anybody, but just the way he maintains other businesses in the town and the appearance and. You can tell the first thing he went down there and did, he 
chop down some of the landscaping and I don't, it's just been you know building without permits just been in disrepair since he's on it so it's just kind of gone south since he's had it and i wish i could say i think he'll come in and do a good job but i'm just afraid based on those other projects it's gonna hurt me here instead of improving any questions for the speaker no we appreciate the time but but his, 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 as far as like the roof and the undermining of Will that have to be brought up to standard? Will right. landscape have to be addressed? If Absolutely. All, that have to all be the standard. development codes will have to be addressed as part of the renovation. Um, as it's listed in your packet, and we did touch on it at the work session, but Building A, which is where the proposed event center is to be located, does have a history of flooding. Um, city staff has documented that, but you're in the year 2008, where Coca-Cola had lost several thousand dollars worth of merchandise. They had to stack things up. <coughs> Um, but that's affecting those two rear buildings. Building B, the four elevation is several feet higher. Well, that's where I thought they used to keep that product for distribution, and that was where they were. So okay. I'm told it was the back warehouses, um, which do sit a bit lower. Um, but, yeah, it's something they've got to engineer carefully with the site. Um, but, yes, any renovations to the buildings must meet all applicable codes, fire, building, life safety, and everything. Now, will the city staff bail me out if this market is ready, they'll be out with it, enforcing them. If it's, if it's approved with conditions, those conditions are stuck to it. Um, he's got to comply with that. Saturdays and Sunday. Um, if necessary. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else that would like to speak against this application? There being none, I will not close the public participation portion of this application. Um, discussion is open lots commissioners. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question for staff? Sure. Um, are there any operation hours indicated already for the flea markets that the applicant has indicated? Is this like Saturday, Sunday? The, there's been several discussions with the applicant over the past few months. There has been no indication of details about the flea market other than you know, this part of the building, uh, when staff did its walkthrough of the entire facility, uh, we could see clearly where the flea market would be. Um, all of his focus has been on the proposed event center. All of the renovation work, at least the majority of it, has been with that building only. Um, so clearly that was his focus. Um, part of the conversation with the applicant months ago was to um, review this and process this one conditional use at a time. The event center was his area of focus. We had suggested submitting that by itself um, and also suggested waiting until after the property um, engineering issues had been worked out so we knew a little better with what we were dealing with and what the remedy was going to be. Um, the applicant, however, contrary to that, went ahead and submitted a conditional use anyway and also submitted it for two of those uses, not just one. But no indication of hours on the flea market and very little discussion or detail of how it would operate. Any other discussion amongst commissioners? Do we vote on these separately or? We have two recommendations for you. Uh, my recommendation is to, just like it's listed here, one at a time. It's two requests under one application. Say that again, it's two conditional use requests. It is two. It is two requests, but under one application. Any other discussion amongst the commissioners? It's up to you if you want to motion both. Um, we, for clarity's sake, we spell them out separately. They're two different uses, two different buildings. Okay. One does not necessarily affect the other. Okay. All right, no, if there's no other discussion, I will now entertain a motion from the commissioners. Mr. Mr. Wills? Quite honestly, I've got a little heartburn with both of them because he's got an opportunity to come and submit an additional site plan, which he has not. We've uh, 
talked about the uh, bad repair of the buildings, uh, building without permits, um, possible water coming in the building. Police chief has got a, a whole list of stuff over here of his concerns with overcrowdedness and uh, exit obstruction and sprinkler system out of date. And uh, this is fire department uh, issues also. And uh, I personally think that we need to recommend denial on number one and number two to the city council. I'll second. All right, we have a motion um, by Commissioner Willis and a second by Commissioner Hall. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all those um, in favor of the motion, do so by raising your hand. All right, all those opposed have the same right. All right, the motion passes seven to two for denial.